This is the first of five short videos on aspects of Ingleborough through the ages. This view is one you will be, I'm sure, familiar with, looking from the east, from the road coming over from Newby Head, uh, which shows it in its possibly most dramatic aspects, overlooking Ribble Head and the Valley of Chapel Dale. And if you just look at the, the, the what you can see on the mountain there, the flat, the top is flat. The sides on the right of the screen and facing you directly are very, very steep, precipitously steep. But the slope on the left hand side of the screen is where the footpath comes up from Little Ingleborough is obviously quite gentle and a very easy approach. The one, the hill on the far left of the picture is, look, is on the way to Simon Fell. And if you look very carefully along the rim of the surface plateau you can see a dark line just below the surface starting about two-thirds of the way along it running to the left-hand end and that is the so-called rampart that surrounds the so-called hill fort. Now borrowing something and paraphrasing Bill Clinton uh, you, you can read in so many books academic books tourist books and whatnot that what sits on top of Ingleborough is a hill fort and that it's Iron Age. So I've just borrowed Bill Clinton's there thing there. It's an Iron an Iron Age hill fort, stupid. And the two quotes I've got there I've taken from academic books. One saying that Ingleborough was once a hill fort said to have been defended by the Brigantes against Roman attack. The other one again from an academic book, saying that blah blah blah, it's the only probable Iron Age hill fort in the Dales. 19 hut circles have been identified. That's fine, except that I've got problems with several words on that screen. I've got problems with hill fort. I've got problems with defended by the Brigantes. I've got problems with against Roman attack. I've got problems with probable I've certainly got problems with Iron Age, again Hill Fort, and I've got problems with Hut Circles. Otherwise, I'm quite happy with it. This is a plan that was published, as it says there, in 1853 in a book by Phillips on rivers, mountains and sea coast of Yorkshire. And it shows a plan of the summit plateau done by the Farrer of the day, the, the head of the Ingleborough state. And he's got, as you can see there, going more or less all the way around the so-called ramparts, let's call it the perimeter, with a few gaps, one facing north at the top of the thing, a couple on the eastern side, and a few smaller ones on the southern side. If you go there now, of course, there's nothing like that, that extent, particularly along the north side. He's also, Farrell also put on there a series of what look like horseshoes, which uh, are the so-called 19 hut circles. Why he didn't complete the circles, who knows? And then on the western side, there's a little circle there and it's labelled St Anthony's Well. Or well, St Anthony's Well would have been a spring and it's no longer visible. And then bottom left and bottom right, there are two sections of what Farrer saw the way that the wall was built and you can see that in, in both those two drawings B and C that they used a box construction with large vertical stones and horizontal cap stones filled with rubble. That's not visible all the way around the so-called ramparts. So that's, a, that's an 1853 view of it. This is a modern survey done in the late 90s or mid to late 1980s showing the the so-called 19 hut circles with with only two of them as horseshoe types the rest of them are completely enclosed and you can see comparing this with what you can remember from the previous slide that the the length of the of the perimeter the rampart by the 1980s was considerably less than it had been in 1853 unless, of course, Farrow was, was using his imagination. So if, if you count them up, and you haven't got time now before this slide disappears, there are actually 20 so-called hut circles on that. 
So this is what used to be called the camp and the huts. This is a nice aerial view taken by Robert White when he was with the National Park Authority. Uh, north is to the top right. You can see the path coming in from bottom left from Little Ingleborough, the easy approach. You can see picked out in the snow the line of the so-called ramparts showing more clearly on this than they did on that 1988 survey. And you can also see some of the 20 circles drawn as if by a compass, again nicely picked out in the snow. And you can possibly also make out on this the dramatic difference in drop between the the top and the the top right and top left of the photo and the bottom left of the photo where you got a much more gradual ascent to the top. This is a view taken maybe 10 years ago by me showing part of the the so-called rampart at the northeastern corner. So if you come if you've come up on the footpath from Colt Park or from uh, the Hill Inn up that last steep bit to Swinetail, this is what you've got on your left. So you can see the remnants of what Farrah drew with these large vertical blocks, uh, a couple there which have, well several which have fallen, and you can see the, sort of the rubble infill, but the box construction that Farrah drew and obviously saw has been much denuded over the last 150 or 170 years partly by the effects of weather, partly by the effects, unfortunately, of walkers who think that it's the stone there to make into a shelter. Never mind. So that's where you can see, even in its degraded state, the rampart, if it was a rampart, was quite substantial. And that again is another view looking northeastwards with Park Fell running off the green top part fell running off behind it and you can see how degraded it is and much of the much of the degrading in that particular view is within the last 20 or so years it's just people rearranging history if you go to the southern end of the plateau overlooking little ingleborough then this is how the perimeter defense looks it's much more subdued there's much less stone. There's one standing block there, but the and it doesn't look as though there ever was this the massive box construction that you can see or that you did see on the previous slides. So it's a very different kind of quote unquote rampart here compared with the rest. The first question I would put to you, or the first thought I would put in your mind here, is given that the Below the arcs and on Black Shiver, the ground is so precipitously steep. Why did they need such a strong rampart if it was a defensive structure? Conversely, on the southern side, where it's much easier and where in the 1930s somebody actually drove a car almost to the top and did drive a tractor to the top to make a beacon, why on that side are the ramparts so much less defined why are they why they were never more defined than that that's the first problem with this idea of Ingleborough being a defensive hill fort so coming back to that looking at the left hand side of the photo nice gentle approach weak defenses on the right hand side and the top of the photo very very strong defenses with precipitous drop a long precipitous drop nobody could have attacked up black shiver or up the arcs. Anybody could have attacked from the Little Ingleborough side. So why can it be a defensive structure? And the second thing, and you can see it clearly there, if you look at the, the visible stone circles, whatever they are, whatever they were, there's a concentration on the southeast, southwest corner of the summit. There are five or six very, very close to the perimeter. If they were hut circles, and if that was a hill fort, why on earth would they have built timber-framed or timber-built thatched huts so close to the weakest defences? And why above the strongest defences, above the arcs, 
there's only one right where the, where the perimeter kinks. There's only one there and two a little bit further away. That just does not make sense. And if you've been up there, I'm sure many of you have, how much soil is there on the top plateau? How much soil would there ever have been on that top plateau? Where's the water? Okay, there was St Anthony's Well, but that's long gone. But St Anthony's Well would have been uh, only flowing in really wet weather. So if that was, if they were hut turtles and people were living up there in this defensive encampment, encampment, where would they have got their water from? And if you were attacking or laying siege to this, you Roman, your Roman cohort laying siege to this hill fort with the Brigantes living there, ha ha, all you'd have to do is just sit tight and wait for them to run out of water. And if the people who were up there, they would have had cattle and sheep and maybe goats, if they drove them into there, then it wouldn't take long for those animals to have completely wiped out whatever vegetation was inside. So we've got real problems here already. This is a view on the southeastern part of the plateau. And what you've got here in the foreground is obviously a circle of stones. It is complete, although it goes off the picture to the left. It's a circle of stones. This is one of the of the so-called 19 or 20 hut circles. And you can see how close it is to the rampart. There's one particularly big stone sticking up there, part of the, uh, the, the blocking sy system. Very close. Quite a large diameter building. Now, can this have been a hut circle. Can it have been something in which people lived year round off a part of the year? Well we've already said there's no water, or there was no water. You can see there there's virtually no soil, virtually no vegetation, and it would not have been much different 2000, 2500 years ago. And where would they have got all the timber and all the thatch to cover all these buildings? Even if all 20 weren't in use at the same time, you'd still need a lot of timber and a lot of thatch. And given how windy it can be up there, and, and probably always has been very windy up there, how long would quite a tall thatch structure have lasted when, you, when it got lashed by gales and all the rest of it? Now, Farah, back in the 1850s, excavated two of these structures. This is one of the circles that Farah excavated and you can see his excavation trench is still there very clearly it goes right through the middle so at the bottom of the picture is part of the where it's sort of brownish reddish that is the perimeter and you can see it swinging around in a circle and Farah put this trench right through the center of this circle and he did another one as well in the same way put a trench right through the middle and he was looking for any evidence of a hearth any evidence of human occupation pottery or bits of bone, bits of burnt material, anything. If you found absolutely nothing in a trench that big, then it would suggest that that was not a habitation. He found nothing. And the only thing that's been found on the top, archaeologically, is, I think it was two small bits of Roman pottery. And just as one swallow does not make a summer, two little bits of Roman period pottery do not mean that that was in use during the Roman period, the Roman Iron Age. So apart from the other reasons why we have to cast doubt on it having been, never mind a hill fort, but any kind of habitation, you've got to add the complete absence of archaeological evidence from these two excavated trenches. So if it wasn't a hill fort, what was it? Now this, these seven here are possible suggestions of what it might have been or how it might have been viewed. Was it simply somebody's, somebody important? Was it their special place? Obviously a person who was at the top of the social hierarchy. Were the ramparts, the so-called ramparts, were they in themselves imbued with symbolic power? It has been suggested elsewhere from prehistoric sites with this kind of... Uh, evidence, if evidence is the right word, that the very act of creating it, of building it, was enough. 
So it, it may not necessarily have been built to do X, Y, Z. The fact you were building it, that in itself was imbuing you, the owner, you, the instigator, with, with symbolic powers. Or the third one there. We started off at the beginning with a slide looking from the road coming from Gearston, where it is extremely dramatic. If you go along the A65, you can't even see the top of Ingleborough. The, the strongest so-called ramparts are on the side above Chapel Dale and facing Ingleton and facing Newby Head. So was that side, when it was created, when it was built, was it meant to be seen? Whereas the other side, with a weak rampart, which is hidden from view, was not meant to be seen. So is it something like, you know, you find in different places where people have built a big house, either in the past or fairly recent present, a really big house, and the front of it is nice and the back of it is not. It's much poorer masonry, for example. Or at the front, you've got some nice walls and railings and at the back you haven't. So was that side of Ingleborough meant to be seen by people passing from east to west or west to east on what probably always has been a major route way to get from the west coast across to beyond the Pennines on the east? Was it for whoever built it and controlled it or whatever, was it their means of controlling cross-country travel along this line, where the, the present road, the B road from Hawes to Ingleton goes? Was it a kind of, not a gatepost, or, but you know, some way of just controlling the fact it's there and everybody knew it was there. If you were coming across, then you would do what you were told. Or, number five, was it, can it, should it be seen in a very different way not looking at it sort of horizontally, two-dimensionally, but looking at it in the vertical plane, was having control of the top of Ingleborough, obviously the highest point around with that great flat top, was that a means of allowing the people who owned the top access to the gods? Now, it's quite a, a, a taxing and challenging hypothesis but it's one that should not be disregarded and discarded sixth the hut circles so-called if they were not hut circles were they just possibly something there not necessarily all at the same time but maybe spread over hundreds of years were they did they have some kind of ceremonial or ritual function were they possibly ring cairns with a burial well not not an, not an interment because there's no soil but a possibly um, a cremation burial inside those circles it's a possibility and the last one there it could simply be like the old norman uh, mott and bailey castles or the old saxon burrs or a big house this is ours and if you want to enter here then you enter on our terms. It's me owning this with my people and I'm making a statement, a powerful statement. So, was it a hill fort? I don't see how it can be perceived as a hill fort. So was it Iron Age? Well, that list there is of five other quote-unquote hill forts in the north of England that have been excavated over the last, say, 20 or so years. Mamtor in Derbyshire, then one at Huddersfield, Scalemore Heads on the, near the Furness Coast, Castor Cliff in the Nelson Cone area, and Fincop also in the Peak District. So if it was Iron Age, if Ingleborough was Iron Age, if those five were Iron Age, then presumably they would have to show evidence in one form or another of occupation after, say, 400 BC. None of those five did. Ingleborough has not revealed either. So there's absolutely no evidence to say it was a it was Iron Age. So coming back to this view, you know, let's come to the Brigantes. The Brigantes were a, a loose confederation of tribes. If they'd stuck themselves on the top there, like I said earlier, all the Romans would have had to do is just wait and sit it out and wait for them either to die of thirst or die of hunger. Or you could send in 
burning arrows, burn their huts down, etc, etc, or attack it en masse from the left from Little Ingleborough. It's, I think, looking at this particular view, this picture, or you could look at it from the other side, from Ingleson's side, it's dominating that line of travel. The B road at the moment, it's dominating what's always been a line of travel. If it isn't Iron Age, then what period was it referring to? One possibility, one strong possibility, and it can be no more than a possibility or maybe a probability, is Bronze Age. So it could have been not a hill fort, not Iron Age, not defensive, but a gathering place, a place of importance to the community during the late, the late Bronze Age. <laughs>